good morning guys it's 10 30 we shall start now first of all thanks a lot uh, for making it to the webinar this morning i really appreciate your time learn a little bit more about dynamics 365 so um before i start um let me just do a quick introduction um I'd like to thank our organizer, Jamlin Consulting, okay, uh, for organizing this wonderful webinar today. Well, just a little bit of background. <clears throat> Jamlin Consulting and uh, Purple Connect, the company where I founded, we are actually partners. So what happened is uh, Purple Connect focuses on delivery of implementation services uh, surrounding Microsoft technologies. Where Jamlin Consulting, as uh, you guys have already been aware they are actually a training provider so this partnership comes about uh, to bring together the delivery and the training combination so that all our customers can learn can implement and to be able to support their own microsoft ecosystem that's the objective of the partnership right so um yeah so please give a round of applause to jamming consulting for organizing this uh, webinar for us Okay, before I jump on to the demo, let me just give a quick introduction of myself, right? I am Wing Sun. I have been in the CRM um, domain for the past 22 years, right? Um, in the past 14 years, <coughs> I've been focusing on dynamic CRM implementation from the very early version 4.0 all the way to 2011, and now it is uh, being branded as Dynamics 365. Okay, um, <coughs> You may reach out to me even after this uh, webinar. We'll be happy to discuss any partnership or collaboration opportunity. So um, lately, um, I've been in touch with uh, Dynamics 365 on the customer engagement side of things. Okay, so today's webinar, we will focus on sharing with you three main app functionalities in Dynamics 365 customer engagement. Okay, so I won't drill down uh, further into my profile. Next. Just want to introduce uh, a little bit the, about the services that we do. Okay, um, Purple Connect was founded since 2007. Okay, uh, I'm one of the founders of the company. At the moment now, we have three offices <coughs> in Malaysia, uh, Singapore, as well as uh, our latest establishment in Australia. Okay, um, all our resources uh, are in the HQ now, situated in PJ. Right. Um, our business nature, we focus on Dynamics 365 business application as well as Power Platform. So, um, these are some of the services that we do, primarily on Dynamics 365, uh, on the customer engagement side, then um, M365, SharePoint services, Power Platform. We also do Power BI, Cluster Application Development on .NET, okay? as well as um, we also carry some marketing automation tool. Okay, so uh, in a nutshell, we are a services company providing implementation services on Microsoft technologies. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, jump into the overview of our demo today. All right, so um, as you know, Dynamics 365 right now has uh, combined both the ERP and the CRM. Okay, uh, used to be Dynamics 365 uh, CRM. They, they call it customer relationship management, but today it is being branded as Dynamic 365 CE. CE actually stands for customer engagement. <coughs> okay. So um, under the CE umbrella, there are a lot of application that Microsoft has developed. Okay. In the past, the Dynamic CRM application itself um, only comes with sales service and marketing uh, functionalities, only three modules all in one. Okay, they, they just sell it as uh, one product, okay? But uh, in the recent years, they have evolved a lot, okay? And a lot of rich functionalities have been added to the product. As a result, you can see over here now, <coughs> there are a lot of apps being added over here, okay? Now, some of these apps are from customer engagement side. Some are actually from the ERP side, okay? ERP, uh, some of them actually call it F&O, Finance and Operation, okay? But today's demo will be mainly on customer engagement. I, I do not do anything on uh, fi uh, finance and operation, okay? I am focusing on only CRM. <coughs> okay. So today's more, um, 
demo, right, we will be sharing with you three main apps. These are the three main pillars that most of the customers implement, okay, when it comes to CRM, okay. I'll first share with you what the sales functionality app has to offer, right, and then we will go on to customer service, right, and finally marketing. So this webinar uh, will last for about two hours, okay, but we do have a lot of things to share. Three apps within two hours is just nice, and hopefully we will have another 10 minutes for Q&A. Uh, if you guys have any question, I'm sorry I have to mute all of you, but if you have any questions, feel free to post at the Q&A box at the top right, okay, uh, and I will be able to address to it, okay. I apologize if I'm not able to attend to all the questions because um, I'm actually only having one monitor here, so um, I may overlook some of the questions here, but if there are anything uh, that you need my attention, please feel free to buzz and my team will attend to it, okay. <coughs> hey. Um, why I choose to cover this three module is because uh, this is actually the end-to-end -end, uh, experience. Okay, all the organization, uh, as you're well aware of, uh, all the organization needs sales, right? And in order to generate sales, they would run marketing activities. Okay, so marketing activities is like the campaign where you run uh, with the objective of uh, finding leads, people who are who are interested in your product. Okay, you send them offers, you send them. Uh, marketing material, you engage with them via SMS, push notification and things like that. Okay, so then they will go in and uh, register their interest and therefore you can start your sales activity. Okay, you can assign your sales people to follow up end to end uh, until the sales is closed. Okay, so sales uh, functionality will, uh, will show you later on how the sales people can actually track their day to day activities, how they can do their own forecast. Right, how the management is able to have a glance of uh, the, the overall uh, target and the uh, progress of the target made by all the sales people. Okay. And finally, once you, you manage to close the sales, the customer becomes uh, your customer and they will actually uh, require some additional services after that, like post implementation services. They may contact your contact center or your hotline, right, requesting for, for some uh, support. Okay, so end to end, it will start with marketing all the way to sales and to service. Okay, so um, the rest of the app we will not be covering today, but um, feel free to drop your comment in the Q&A if you uh, think you, you want to know more about it so we can uh, organize subsequent uh, webinar to address those. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so um, that's all. I don't have many slides to share. So uh, without further ado, I will jump on to the demo, right? My first part of the demo will be focusing on sales functionality first, okay? Um, this is going to be just a preview session. I will not be able to show the entire sales functionalities for you over the, the three hours, okay? Uh, but we do have some courses that uh, we are running together with Jamrain, okay? So if you want a further deep dive into any of this module, uh, you can sign up for our course later on, right? The detail will be shared with you later, okay? So let me cover the first part, sales, okay? This will take maybe about uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, once I'm done with the sales module, then um, I'd like to give you guys a two minute break, okay? While I do the setup to get the demo ready for service, okay? There's uh, quite a bit to do uh, set up over here. Once the service is done, then uh, another two minute break before we go to the marketing, okay? So not to worry, you can go and grab your coffee later on. Okay, allow me to share my, my desktop now. Just give me a while. Okay. Okay, so I, I guess all of you can see my screen now. <clears throat> okay, so um, just to give some background, I am now logged on as a salesperson. Okay, uh, on the top right, you can see who I am. I'm Jeremy Johnson. Okay, I'm simulating a salesperson role now. Okay, um, how Dynamics 365 Sales Hub works is that uh, it's a web application. Okay, but uh, at the same time, there is also a mobile app that you can download. Meaning to say, as a salesperson, you are not constrained to only accessing this application from the web browser. You can actually download the app, 
uh, it is called <coughs> Dynamics 365 Deals Hub and download it, download this app. This is the mobile app that salesperson can use to sign into the same application that I'll be showing you, okay? <coughs> okay, so under this application, um, once I've signed in, right, you can see over here, the navigation will be on the left-hand side. I give a bit of introduction how you navigate around first. Okay, um, I've also got a soft phone integration set up. Uh, if I may just show you on the right-hand side over here, there is a soft phone embedded here. Okay, meaning to say, from within this application, I'm able to initiate a call directly to my customer. Okay, so that's the integration using a, a channel integration framework. Okay, for some of you who is aware of that. Now, navigation is on the left-hand side. So as a salesperson, <coughs> uh, let me just show you the first functionality, sales accelerator. Okay, as a salesperson, um, I, I just need to know who are the leads that I need to work on okay, every day. Okay, but um, if I don't have a system to tell me, uh, it is quite hard for me to ascertain who is more important, right? I have so many leads, I don't know who I should follow up with first, okay? But fortunately, Dynamics 365 has got some intelligence AI built in. Okay, you can see there are actually scores being assigned to each lead over here. Okay, I can actually sort the lead by score. So to know that, you know, this is the lead that's most likely going to purchase from me. Okay, how this score is being uh, allocated, uh, there's some intelligence in it. <clears throat> it is based on things like um, how many email interaction or appointment that you have with the customer. The more activity you engage with the customer, the system will deem that uh, it is more likely that he will buy from you. Okay, So the score logic of how to configure and to assign a score can be configured into the system. <clears throat> okay, So now for the demo purpose, you see over here I have Alex Baker who is ranked 91 score okay so i know this is a person uh, that i should engage okay as a salesperson so let's click on his record okay so you can see the detail of this uh, lead appears on the right hand side okay now um i know this is a bit cluttered so let me just collapse this see how i collapse <coughs> i'm here to collapse the menu bar if you want more space okay so now I'm looking at Alex Baker record, right? I am able to know what he's interested in. Okay, uh, she she is interested in a uh, cafe automatic. Okay, this is actually a coffee making machine, right? And then his title, his contact number, where she works for. Okay, these are all information that are available at my fingertips. Okay, now what I need you to focus here is on the right hand side. Okay, you can see over here. There are a lot of steps already being defined. Step one, step two, right? Step four. So what happened is in Dynamics 365 sales app, you are able to define a set of sales processes that you want your sales team to follow. Okay, this will make their task much easier and there is a, a protocol that they will follow whenever they, they engage on a lead, okay? So in this example, I have configured five steps, okay? So the first step is always um, first customer call. That means I want my salespeople to initiate the first call to this customer, say hello, right? Introduce a product, offer help to them, right? Find out what what, uh, what are the product that will interest them. That will be my first initial call. I want all my salespeople to do that, okay? So that will be the first step. And second step, I want them to do a follow -up email. Okay, uh, this may not happen immediately, maybe X days after the first initial call is done, you want the uh, step two to take precedent. Okay, after this follow up mail, then maybe I want the salesperson to send a call summary with a link to a product one pager to the customer. So that's how I slowly engage the customer, introduce the product that I'm selling. Okay, maybe a few weeks later, I do another follow up mail and finally I do another follow up call to the customer. So as an organization, as a sales head, I can define these five steps as what my sales people have to follow whenever they tackle a lead. Okay. So um, since I'm playing a salesperson role now, let's just initiate a call to this person. Okay. Now you don't have to use your phone to initiate a call. You can click on this button here to initiate a call directly. Okay. So um, I'm calling this customer. Now uh, I'm not going to talk to her. Okay. After the call has been ended, you notice that I've got a box here. 
Okay, the system will automatically track for me the duration of the call, who I call, what was the number that I call, right? And it's going to create what we call as phone activity. A phone activity means uh, an interaction that I have with this uh, prospect today. Okay, so the system will track in the in this record that I actually made a call to him and I spoke with her for 10 minutes. Okay, and if I need to write some summary about a call, I can use the notes here and start typing and click on add notes. Okay, but for the purpose of demo, I'm not going to create any data. Okay, so just, uh, just to let you know, it is as easy as that. Okay, whenever you initiate a call to the customer or you set an appointment to the customer or you send an email to the customer, all these are called activities and they are all shown in a timeline over here. Okay, so you can treat timeline as a historical event of all the different engagement that me as a user of this system have with Alex Baker, who is the prospect. Okay, so you see over here, I've got appointment set with uh, Alex Baker, okay, and a few other things. So the phone call that I initiated to her, by right should be shown in the timeline as well, but because I did not save it, so it did not appear, okay? So the idea here is timeline will show you all the happenings, all the different engagement that your organization has with this lead record, okay? It may not be you yourself, okay? If there are multiple salespeople working on the same lead, let's say my colleague actually sent an email with product brochure to her, by looking at the timeline, I will know when and who actually sent the information to her. Okay, so that will give a background to whoever uh, that wants to know more about the engagement before meeting up with Alex Baker. Okay, so that's how I initiate a phone call. Now, let's say um, I after initiating a phone call, the next step is actually a follow-up email, right? Okay, so let me just bring up another lead record, Alex Griffith. Okay, you can see over here for this particular lead, the next step is the follow up email. Okay, so there's a follow up email here. So before I email this person, okay, I may not have uh, remember what actually transpired, right? What, what am I email him, emailing him about, right? We are all busy people, you may not remember. But not to worry, there's this catch up on last analyzed call. I'm going to show you what this feature is now, okay? Before I send an email to this person, I want some background about what happened. Okay, so I don't have to call my colleague to ask what actually happened. I just click here. This will show me a call summary. Now, the call summary is not just the transcript. There is a transcript over here. Okay, uh, CRM or Dynamics 365 Sales Hub will actually record the entire conversation. Let me try to play it. Okay, something like that. Okay, so what I need to highlight here is the entire conversation is being recorded and at the same time, the system will actually produce a transcript out of the conversation. So you can see over here, everything is recorded. Okay, and not only that, the system is smart enough to capture if during the conversation there's any action item that I need to follow up. For example, Someone mentioned, no problem, I will send you the invite. Okay, straight away, system knows this is an action item, therefore it will create this over here. Okay, if you want to know at which transcript this was being mentioned, click on it, it will highlight to you. Okay, not only that, there is also a highlight step. This is even more uh, interesting. This will actually capture throughout your conversation things like what are the uh, keywords that was mentioned. Okay, and then uh, who are the people, the names, okay, that was mentioned, the price, the competitor information, okay, the system has got the intelligence to sort of recognize what you actually spoke in the call, okay, and start putting this all together for you, okay, so this is a very useful tool, okay, um, at the same time, it will also help do some tagging, Okay, so that later on, if you want to do a search on this transcript, you are able to search based on this tagging. Okay, and then uh, it will record how long was the conversation and also how long was the longest monologue. That means uh, the customer just kept quiet. Okay, if you need to listen to entire conversation, go ahead, play, play this and you can listen to the entire thing. Alright, so this is uh, this is quite a useful tool over here. 
Okay, so uh, what I've shown you just now is how to um, engage a lead from within the sales hub. Okay, you can do a call in immediately. There's a soft phone integrated that will uh, help you record the summary of the call as well. Okay, and then uh, the system is able to configure a set of steps that um, every salesperson has to follow. So, so the, the sales activity will become more structured, okay, uh, rather than leaving it to the whims and fancy of the sales team, right? It is better to have a structured methodology so that everybody follows this step and you are, you, you, you are sure that you will not leave out um, any, any leads unattended, okay? Now, let me move on to the second part of the demo, right? Okay, on the second part of the demo, what I want to show you is um, how you actually engage the customer on the opportunity, okay? What I earlier showed you was just how to initiate contact with the lead. Okay, so this is actually the first step, just engaging the contact. Now, when I engage the contact, I know that he's interested in something, I will start creating an opportunity, right? Opportunity is like a, a, a ticket where I record the detail of what he wants, okay, what product, what is the, the percentage that I think I will close this deal, what is the forecast amount, okay? So I will do that on the other, uh, window over here. I'm logged on as another person now called David Mallory. Okay, just assume this guy now is someone who will follow up with the opportunity. Okay, so under the opportunity module here, <coughs> if I click on it, system will show me all my open opportunities. My open opportunities. Okay, so it's not uh, opportunity belonging to other salespeople. It is mine. Okay, every salesperson will have their own view. Okay, this is my view. Um, there's a color indicator over here that will tell me which uh, opportunity is in a healthy state, which is not. Okay, this is again derived by the AI component of the system. Okay, um, I will show you more how this is derived later on, how it thinks that this is a poor opportunity and why it thinks the relationship is declining. Okay, I will show you later on. Um, okay. Dynamics 365 has got a chart feature over here. In fact, all the grids that you see will have a chart. Okay, let me just show you how you can use of this chart. Now I've got a chart here that shows me relationship pipeline. Actually, there are more charts than this, okay? But we're not going to show all of this. Um, just show one that's very interesting, relationship pipeline. This summarizes of all the opportunity, which one is in a healthy state and which one is likely to close. So there are two axes here, okay? The y-axis is showing relationship health. Okay, the further up I go, okay, it means the relationship is more healthy. This is the score given, okay? If I am the bottom, means that relationship is not healthy, okay? Now the x-axis here shows how many days I estimate to close that opportunity. Okay, the nearer it is to the left hand side, the closer my salesperson thinks he can close the deal. Okay, so now the size of the, the bubble over here indicate the amount of revenue. Okay, so when you look at this relationship pipeline chart, okay, obviously you will focus on the larger bubble on the top left. It means this is the one that is going to close in maybe less than five days and the relationship is very healthy okay so you tackle everything on the top left these are the ones with the highest chance of closing so let me just click on one okay it's going to bring me straight to the opportunity record okay and this is how the opportunity record looks like um okay. for first timer you may feel that there's a lot of information over here but not to worry let me walk you through Okay, this is an opportunity <clears throat> that is owned by me. Okay, my customer wants a Cafe A100 automatic machine. Okay, now um, these are just information about um, what is the budgeted amount of this customer, who is the customer, Alex Baker, right? Um, which company is she from? Trade Research. Okay, then over here, I also have a timeline, just like what I showed. Okay, the timeline shows what are all the different engagement that my salespeople have with regards to this opportunity. Okay, 
example, if someone calls the um, Alex Baker today, or if someone sends a proposal to her, I will be able to see from the timeline. Okay. Now, as you scroll to the right hand side, there are more things over here. Okay, I, I want you to take a look at uh, one interesting thing. Okay, um, this is the assistant. There is an assistant over here that will tell me what I need to do. Okay, so if there's an email that I have not been uh, replying for more than uh, one week, for example, the assistant will remind me, hey, I got one email from this client that is not replied yet. Okay, or if I have an opportunity that's about to close, Okay, based on my estimated close date that I put over. Still not close and no activity happening one week towards the closure. Again, the assistant will pop up and remind me. Okay, so the assistant will, will do this job for me. Right, then um, I've also got an opportunity score here. Okay, um, the relationship is improving or not improving. Okay, now if I let me show you right um this is relationship analytics that over here okay this is something that is also interesting it summarizes all the different interaction that i have with this uh, opportunity okay so if i have initiated phone calls okay it's going to tell me how many times i called compared to the other opportunity that is similar in nature Okay, then it will also tell me things that you have invested 55 minutes lesser compared to similar opportunity. So what system is trying to do here is it will compare this opportunity. Okay, because every opportunity you actually tag what this opportunity is about and the size of the opportunity and the product that they're interested in. Okay, so the system is able to match similar opportunity in the past and tell you how well or how bad you're performing compared to previous opportunity. Okay, so then from here, you can drill down further to understand more. Like, um, see, this opportunity compared with similar one opportunity. Okay, the blue ones are the similar one opportunity. The, the light blue are this opportunity. Okay, so you can know that for those that I won previously, oh, I actually sent 10 emails, but now I'm sending 12. So this is just an indicator for you. Lah. Okay, then um, how much time have you spent? You can also see over here. Then your response time compared to other deals that you have won previously. Okay, your email ratio. Okay, uh, whether you're responsive enough. Okay, and not only yours, but uh, the customer's email send ratio as well. So this summary will will actually tell you um, how well you're engaging compared to other opportunity that's similar in nature. <clears throat> okay. Okay, now let me just go back to my opportunity record. There's another thing I want to show you here. Okay, another interesting thing here is um, I can actually initiate a Teams chat with my other sales member. Okay, there's a button over here. Yeah, the Teams chat window. Okay, it's embedded right beside the sales hub. Okay, what I can actually do is I can initiate a chat with anybody. Okay, and I can link the chat with regards to this opportunity, okay? And not only that, I can also link a, a Teams chat channel to this opportunity. Okay, so let's say this opportunity is a very important one, okay? Uh, very high revenue, okay? I have a channel that is specifically talking about this opportunity and I have a group of salespeople working together to close this opportunity, okay? I can use this feature to link it Okay, and what will happen next is if I go to the teams, this is my teams. Okay, and under this particular channel, okay, I have this opportunity embedded inside. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I think this is uh, refreshing. Okay, give it a while, it will load the opportunity record inside the teams window. 
Okay, so what happened is other people who may not be on the dynamic CRM now, but maybe they are in the Teams channel, they will be able to see the opportunity itself. Okay, and then uh, by looking at this here, they can collaborate, they can share files, right? They can share video, they can initiate discussion, okay, everything within the Teams. Okay, so two ways. Within the Teams, they can have access to the opportunity. Within the opportunity, they can also have a discussion uh, over here. <clears throat> okay, they can initiate a chat immediately. Okay, uh, I can chat with Jeremy about the opportunity. Okay, now whenever I chat on anything over here, it is actually linked over to the opportunity. So information is not lost. Okay, if anybody opens this opportunity later on, they can go in and look at what has transpired between the team members. Okay, so this is another um, good feature that will help in collaboration. Let me just close that. Okay, now another thing I'd like to show you is um, okay, let me go into this company record. Okay, I know Alex is the, the person that I interact with. Okay, and Alex is from this company, Tree Research. Right now, um, under three research, I can look at the organization information. I can know who are the people working in three research. Okay, um, if I go into this particular person, <coughs> okay, let me just cl click on Alex again. Okay, there's a question here, how do we embed the MS team, right? Okay, not to worry, that one is just a setting. Okay, at the sales hub under the setting area, there is a button for you to enable the team's integration. Okay, and then uh, it will just um, ask you to grant permission. Just go ahead, click next, next, and it will be turned on already. Okay, because everything is all tied into the same uh, pendant login. <clears throat> so there's nothing fancy there. Go to the setting area. There's a Teams integration window. Okay, just turn it on. All right. So I'm at uh, Alex Baker's profile screen. Okay. Um, what I want to show you here is. Okay, I have to log into my. I want to show you the LinkedIn integration. Give me a while. I need to log in first. Okay, um, as you know, Dynamics 365 <coughs> has got a tight integration with LinkedIn. Okay, so if you guys are familiar with uh, LinkedIn and who is connected to the person, right, his interest, you can actually uh, do that via the LinkedIn integration. Okay, let me see if it's working over here. Sometimes the uh, the credential will, will mess up when I open too many windows, okay? But let's hope it works now. There's supposed to be a LinkedIn Navigator window over here that will show the information. Let me log in again. Uh, just now. I would like to show you this feature. I think this is actually... Everything is just integrated. I'll go into this person, right? Alex Baker. Now let's hope this thing appears. If it doesn't, then too bad. Okay, I, I'm not going to show you that. But it's not working now. Okay, never mind. Okay. Um. Yeah, I can't. I can't show you now. I think the credential messed up the session. Okay. But what was supposed to show is there is a LinkedIn Navigator window over here <coughs> that will show me the profile of Alex Baker in LinkedIn. So from there, I'm able to know who are people connected to Alex Baker, okay, and also he, her, her interest level and things like that, okay. 
it doesn't show now okay um i think because i open too many windows but not to worry okay as you scroll down further at the profile of alex baker right you can also see this section called who knows whom okay these are my internal team member okay who knows alex baker okay and there's a bar as well over here to indicate the strength of the relationship okay the the green bar means that alex dana has a very strong relationship with Alex Baker. So if I want to um, connect myself to Alex Baker, I can ask this guy, Alan Stainer, who is my colleague, introduce. So I can click here. Can you please introduce me to Alex Baker? Things like that, okay? You can initiate it right from here. Okay. All right, another thing I want to show you is um, the system also has got um, organization chart okay now i'm at the trade research the company where alex baker works for right okay at the top here i've got a open op chart okay so what happened is if i open this it's going to show me all the personnel who is working under this company from the ceo all the way down i'm able to navigate through to know who are the key stakeholders that i need to be in contact with okay and his position is also here right so it may take some time for you to gather all this information okay uh before you can produce an chart like this uh, okay a lot of my customers they use this system but you know they they may not have the data to render all this okay so it actually takes time for you to build all this okay but it's still better than um you know they're trying to build it from nowhere uh, okay by having this system you can slowly build all this information okay and if your sales team member um leave right Ah, the pop-up blocker. I think I've already... Oh, you're right. Hey, hey, you're right. Thanks, thanks. Somebody actually said uh, it could be the pop-up blocker that's blocking the LinkedIn navigator. I've just enabled it. Uh, let me just try it later on. Okay. So from here at the org chart, I can easily navigate to the person that I want to know. Okay, I can see his profile over here. Okay, then I can go in. Let me see whether the LinkedIn Navigator is working now. Yes, it's working now. Okay, see this is the LinkedIn Navigator where it immediately fetched the profile of this person. Okay, integrated to LinkedIn directly. I can know, you know, who are the eight, uh, icebreakers. Okay, who, who is her connection? Okay, and before I say hi to her, maybe we have some common friends. I can able to see over here. Okay, I can also see get introduced if I want to get introduced to some of the connection. Okay, that Alex Baker knows, I can also here ask for introduction directly from here. So you can see LinkedIn Navigator is immediately um, embedded within this application. Okay, so if I may just show you again, right, at this um, Alex Baker profile. Okay, I can go in. Here. go to her profile again <coughs> Alex Baker so you can see over here the, the CRM system links all the relationship together okay from this person who's working under the company okay from the company itself I can see the entire org chart okay, I can navigate to this person who's working under the company okay it immediately shows the LinkedIn profile over here navigator profile okay then I can get the information that I need immediately. <clears throat> okay. So not to be confused, I am actually at looking at this person profile. Okay. The timeline over here shows all the different interaction that I have with this person. Okay. This person may be working on, uh, I may be interacting with her uh, related to a number of opportunities, not only one, right? So all the entire conversation that I have with her, whether it's regards to opportunity A, B, or C, all will appear under here at the timeline, okay? Now, if I want to know a specific opportunity that I am working on with her, okay, for example, this one, okay, I can click on it, and I am going to that opportunity screen, okay? This is the opportunity screen, okay? Under opportunity, remember, there's always some key information, like, when i think this opportunity will close okay these are all the 
key metrics that a salesperson will need to capture whenever he works on an opportunity. Okay, I will tell you why later. Okay, it's important to indicate when you think this will close. It's important to indicate the estimated amount of revenue you think you will get from this opportunity. Okay, and it's even more important to indicate the status. Okay, are you at the closing stage or sending proposal stage or are you just uh, you know in progress working on this lead or is this a new lead? Okay, these are all the statuses that it goes through. Okay, um, there's a process bar over here that I did not drill down in detail. Okay, um, what what this process bar helps is it helps structure the sales uh, stages. Okay, so every sales stage uh, will go through all these stages from identification. These are information that I captured under the identify stage. Okay, as I progress through the stage, this red, red uh, bar will move okay, to develop. Okay, when I'm at develop stage, this is when I need to have more information. Okay, like I need to know who are the key decision maker. I need to identify my sales team who will be engaging. I need to have some intelligence on when this deal is going to close and how much is the re estimated revenue okay there's no point that you know your salesperson report to you say i am actually developing this opportunity is very close to closing but he's not able to tell you any information not even the size of the deal not even who is a decision maker in the company if he can't tell you all this then he's not at this stage okay so this process bar actually helps structure what information your salesperson has to capture at every stage of the opportunity Okay, as he progresses further to the right towards closure, he will get more and more information. Okay, like if he's at the proposal stage, he needs to know um, what's the amount of the proposal that he sent over and there must be a proposal that's attached. Okay, so this is how the management can go through to make sure that every sales process is being followed through. Okay, now this process bar over here is not uh, cast in stone. Okay, you can configure it appropriately according to the the sop of your company okay so this is just standard one identify develop propose send survey okay some some of my customers think that there are too many stages they want only three stages go ahead these are all configurable okay and the system will actually track how long this opportunity has lapsed see like over here it has been active so um we will know end to end how long it takes to close this particular opportunity Okay, now by having all this indicator, right, let me show you what you can get, what kind of uh, intelligent or, or forecast you can get out of this information. Okay, as a management, okay, if I go to forecast, <coughs> there is a forecast module in uh, Dynamic Sales that will actually um, tell me how well I'm doing, okay, and how it derives this. Again, there's some AI intelligence built on it. Okay, it will tell me uh, what what is my prediction okay, for this particular period. Okay, you can change the period if you want, right? And then um, I can actually have a glance at the Kanban. Okay, it will show me all the opportunity. I'm David Mallory. Okay, by the way, I'm David Mallory now. So it shows me how much I have at the pipeline. Okay, what is my best case scenario? Okay, what is the committed amount? Okay, omitted amount and how much I have won and how much I have lost. <clears throat> okay, how the system knows all this is based on the opportunity earlier. Okay, you have to enter all this information before you can produce this to you. Okay. Now, not only that, it can also show you a trend. Right over time. Okay. Um, you can see over here the the dark blue ones are the opportunity amount that you won okay right and then the yellow one are your forecast so you can see over here you forecasted more but you actually won less okay then there is also such thing called as prediction prediction is not what you entered okay prediction is something that the system will derive for you okay based on the the open opportunity and the likelihood of the opportunity closing so it will do a prediction for you okay so then uh, obviously you can set a quota for each salesperson so you go on further you can also see the flow okay uh, 
this flow actually shows the comparison between uh, two points of time. Okay, so like for example, I'm I'm selecting these two range, 20th of March, 21st of March. So I'm actually comparing okay, how the the opportunity grows uh, between these two dates. Okay, and how how much earlier I forecasted as one, okay, and eventually how much I actually won on the next day. Okay. So you can see the differences over here. This is the delta. There's a line, a fake purple line, right? So this is actually the delta. Right? So this is another important uh, thing you can use. Okay, the sales uh, functionality has got a lot more other modules. Okay, um, like for example, you are able to set goal, okay, where you can group your salesperson into different um into different territory, you can do a roll up goal from the sales uh, people, sales team member, all the way to the sales head, all the way to the country head. Okay, you can do that. Okay, let me just show you. Mm, for that, I will log in as a NC, okay? Sales director. Let me just log in as her. Huh? Just give me a while. Okay, let me... I gotta close all this. Okay, this is the this is the problem when I switching window, see? Because the the CRM application has got a lot of feature that goes by role. Okay, good. I can see different things. I always have to switch to different role because as a manager I will see more things than the sales. Okay, so now I'm logging in as man. Really the sales head. So she will have much. Show you. Okay, while waiting for it to load, I see a question here. Does the user need to log into a LinkedIn to see the LinkedIn profile? Yes, the person needs to log in. So that's why um in the demo just now I actually had to log in using the same credential that I use for my uh, Office 365. You have to log in first. All right, so um, okay, same thing. Let me log into Power BI. I'm going to show you how as a salesperson or, or salesman, what type? Your own system, okay. So I am now Nancy, the sales head. Let's look at um, see what it has okay forecast okay let's look at forecast first okay similar to David just now okay but you see over here Nancy has got a roll up target these are all the people reporting to her okay and it all sums up to be her quota up here okay so you can do things like this Entire sales team member report to Nancy. I can know each of these salesperson. What is the target? Okay, how much he has won? What is the best case? What did he commit? How much he has lost? Okay, I can see all this information. Right? If I want to see the prediction, it also allows me to see that. Let's say uh, I look at my own prediction. Okay, I'm Nancy. I click on prediction row here, 262,000, right? It's going to tell me how the system derive this 262,000. How it gets the 262,000, okay? 165,000 is from one, okay? And then um, 80,000 is from predicted from open, from new, and total prediction, therefore, is this amount. Okay, so the prediction is not something that the salesperson enter. Prediction is something that the system will derive based on the probability that you put and based on the engagement that you have within the opportunity. So it has some intelligence, it will calculate for you and do a prediction for you. Okay, and the prediction actually takes care of the statistics from the past. Okay, so it's not blindly forecasting. There is some intelligence to it, right? Okay, now it will also give you a summary. 88% of your opportunity are predicted to slip to the next period. Okay, 75 of your opportunity totally how much is close unexpectedly fast in less than one day. See, this, uh, this kind of uh, assistant 
is able to report to you all this information. Okay, so again, under Nancy, I can also have um, a view by trend, same like um, the login just now, okay, and also the flow. I can see all this. Okay, now let me switch over to the reporting side of things. So as Nancy, right, I'm a sales head. I have all the information of the sales opportunity and the sales people activity in the Dynamics CRM sales hub, right? So what do I get out of it? Okay, I can build a Power BI report. Okay, for some of you who may not be familiar with Power BI, okay, this is a reporting tool that, uh, that is also part of the, the Microsoft Power Platform family, okay? So what happened is uh, there's already ready connector for you to connect to the sales um, Dynamic 365 app where you can do your report straight away from your live system. Okay, so I've got this sales system over here and I've got my Power BI report. So this Power BI report will tell me the pipeline, the state of the pipeline, okay, for every sales people in my company. Okay, if I'm interested in one particular um, record, right, I just click on it. It will refresh the rest of the charts to reflect on the area that I'm interested in. Okay, these are just a Power BI feature. Okay, um, there's also an analysis here that I want to show you. <clears throat> okay, so Power BI has got this feature where it can actually do some analysis for you to tell you um, the likelihood of sales being won increases when I sell the combination of these two products. So it can do that kind of uh, analysis for you. Okay, so it can tell me that. Then I also have got um, Opportunity Health. Okay, so all these reports, okay, by the way, the bubble means the size of the opportunity and then the color is actually indicating the stage of the opportunity. Okay, so as a management, right, Nancy is the manager, okay? She will just log into this dashboard and look at things at a very macro level, okay? And she can actually drill down further, okay, into a specific opportunity. And if she wants more information about the opportunity, she can actually go to Dynamics 365, pull out the opportunity and start um, checking what is going on with the opportunity. Okay, so everything is at the fingertip, okay? And like I said before, the web interface is just one of the um, uh, methods to access this system. You can also do it via your, your mobile app. Okay, so as a management, you don't have to um, just view it at the office. Okay, you can go home, open the mobile app, app and start looking at your charts, but um, tracking the salespeople's opportunity. Okay. All right. So um, let me see. Okay. It's 11.30 now. I think I am done with the first demo on the sales. Okay, by the way, just to recap, we have only done this part. Okay, I wish I could show you more, but I just don't have the time. Okay, I need to move on to customer service now. All right. So um, just uh, give me a few minutes to do the login setup. Uh, you may just go for a two minutes break while I do the setup. Thank you. Come back in two minutes.
Okay, guys. Um, sorry, I was on mute just now. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, this is my first live event. Sorry about that. Not too sure about the the component over here. Right. So what I was trying to say is, um, there are two. Okay. Let me let me just continue. Okay, there are two window over here. The first one, what I was trying to show you is this is a customer service officer window. Okay, I am logged on now. Okay, the green chat box indicate that I'm ready to take live chat. Okay, I've got a customer called Claudia. Okay, this customer is now browsing through the support portal. Okay, of my company. Okay, trying to find some help in the knowledge base. Okay, so um. Now, this Claudia has got some issue with her coffee machine. Okay, uh, she's not able to find help over here, so she indicates that she needs a live chat support. She clicks on a button over here. Now, Dynamics 365 has got this um, power virtual agent okay, that will immediately respond to me. Okay, it's like a chat bot, right? Let's see whether it responds to me or not. Okay, okay, let me, okay, it's a bit slow, huh? Okay, so the live, the virtual chatbot will greet me, okay, detected issue with uh, Smart Brew 300, let me know when you are in front of the machine, okay, so let's say I just uh, reply, yes, I'm in front. Okay, this is just an example that I've set up, huh? so don't, don't be worried about the flow, okay, all these are configurable. Okay, now the virtual chatbot actually provided me a knowledge base article okay, asking me to, to try and help myself uh, by going through this document. So I, I'm fed up. I said, no, I want to talk to an agent. Fed up of talking to a bot. So immediately he will route me to an agent. So if I switch over to the customer service screen, you see over here, there's a chat request by Claudia. Officer, I will just accept it. Now, notice what happened next. Once I click accept, right, immediately the profile of this customer is being brought up. Okay, a few things happen at the same time, right? Okay, profile being brought up. I know I'm talking to Claudia. I have her contact information all handy now. On the right hand side, there's something called Smart Assist. Okay, this Smart Assist is going to suggest to me what are the potential issues of this customer? Okay, so I've got all the help okay, laid out for me on the right hand side. Right? So how it knows this is um, based on your conversation. It's going to try and search for related article based on the past uh, issue resolution. Right? So um, as a customer officer, let me just um, Go through the chat transcript. I can use some shortcut over here to say, okay, uh, you are chatting with me. Please give me a moment to review your chat transcript. I can do things like that, okay? I don't have to type everything. There are shortcuts available. So obviously, if I go to Claudia's view, I can see I'm chatting with Enrico, okay? Let's say Enrico uh, wants to initiate a video call. Yeah. And over here, video call or voice call. Okay, I can immediately start video call. As a customer service officer, I want to guide this customer through video call. Okay, so uh, initiate video call. At the customer end, I can see there's a request for video call as well. I will just accept it. Okay, so you, you see over here. Mm, so, so these two are actually talking. Just end it just to show you. So video call can be initiated right from the application. Okay, now what is uh more important over here? I I shouldn't have ended the call. Um, let me just do that again. Ah, sorry about that. I wanted a demon thing, okay. But now I've already closed the chat, so let me just initiate. What I was trying to show you is the system will actually um, indicate the sentiment of the customer based on the words that she used. 
Okay, if she started cursing in the chat, right, the system will started to say complimentary things like thank you, wonderful, fast response, get the sentiment as a show, okay? Yeah, wow, huh? Okay, uh, as usual, the virtual bot will take some time. Okay. Drop to an agent. Okay, um, accept it. Again, I'm talking to Claudia. Okay, uh, notice the smart assist show up. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I need to email a solution to Claudia immediately, right? Let's say this is the solution that will help her. I can straight away initiate email. Okay, from here. Okay, I don't have the rights. Uh, okay, if I have the rights, I can just go in here and initiate an uh, email, send this article over to her. Okay, now, um, wonderful. Once I type in great, right? Straight away the sentiment here changes. Oh, there says slow. Okay, slow. Okay, so angry, slightly negative. Very good, then it will show very happy, lah, okay? So this, what I'm trying to show you is the sentiment is being uh, interpreted, okay? Based on the words that check. Okay? Now, as I'm attending to this chat, what I can also do is um, I'm also able to search knowledge based on my own. Okay, sometimes the smart assist may not uh, may not be matching the correct article for you. Okay, you can do a search. Okay, so it is yeah, the entire knowledge base will, will match and then you can actually put in the resolution from here itself. Okay. Okay, now over here. If you know that this call is related to one of okay, uh, so let's say this is regarding this particular case that was locked before. Okay, this conversation is about the case. Then you can do this. Okay, there's a question here. The chat only support English. Uh, there are a number of languages supported. It's not only English. Okay, there are lang language pack that you can install to support that. Okay, there's also another question here. In order to have the call, historical engagement with the customer, all customer has to have Microsoft Teams account, at least email. Uh, not necessary. Okay, how the, the CRM tracks the interaction is, as long as you initiate the interaction from within the the sales app, right? Like if you send an email from the sales app, okay, it will record that as an interaction. Okay, if you do a phone call from the, the soft phone integration that I showed earlier within the sales app, it will also record now. Okay, but obviously if you do an email reply from outside the CRM system, like you use your own Gmail and reply, obviously that will not be tracked. Uh. Okay, so it's not it's not tracked using MS Teams, it's tracked based on the, the interaction that you create from within the Dynamics CRM. Okay, so it's best to have all the interaction initiated from Dynamics CRM, whether it is an appointment, email, phone call, fax, SMS, you can initiate all this from within the system. Okay, so you have the entire history of the engagement within one place. Okay, so um, that's the scenario I wanted to show you on the live chat. 
okay, just to recap, okay, as an agent, okay, I am able to initiate video call or even a voice call to the customer. Okay, um, CRM comes with a portal where you can provision on your own, uh, like a self-service portal for your customer. Okay, in the portal, you can expose the knowledge base. They can do a search on their own to, to get some help on their own. If not, they can do a, a live chat uh, engagement. Okay, the virtual bot will reply first. Okay, but if it doesn't serve the purpose, you can always uh, direct to a live agent. I've also demonstrated to you that as an agent, you can have a shortcut key over here okay, to select a list of standard replies, right? And then finally, the sentiment of the customer is also being on the conversation that happens in the live chat, right? So, so that's why live chat. Now, one thing, um, one other scenario on the customer service that I want to show you is really on the case management, okay? Just the case management side of things. Uh, let me just show you now. Okay. Okay, so case management again I have to log in using the right agent then I will show you um, what the system captures under the case management okay things like the SLA the categorization of the case these are all captured Okay, since I'm here, I will also log in to okay. I can show you some reports that are available. It's going to be a while, huh? Okay, I apologize for like I said, um, this system is very uh, sensitive towards the login. Show you the feature that I want to show. Right, so let me go back here. Okay, now as a customer service officer, let me go to my cases view. <clears throat> More cases. Okay, so I've got a list of cases over here. Okay, let me just open one example. So as a customer service officer, I've got a dashboard here that shows all the list of cases that I need to attend to. Okay, my active ones, the ones that have resolved, okay, and the entire organization outstanding cases. I've got a three tracks over here, okay. So I just opened one case that's owned by me, no display on coffee maker. Okay, this is how the, the case screen looks like. Right, so on the left hand side, I've got the categorization of the case. Okay, who is the customer? Where Where is this case being locked from? Okay, for this example, this case is being locked from an IoT. Okay, the CRM has got an IoT integration whereby the, if there's any device that is faulty, it's going to trigger and create a case automatically. Okay, so in this example, it's being triggered from IoT. Okay, then the category, what product is being uh, uh, reported as faulty, these are all tracked there. Okay, and the incident type. What is the fault about? Okay, so this is nothing fancy. Okay, on the smart assist, I've already uh, explained to you. Okay, immediately, based on the case title, no display on coffee maker. Okay, the system is going to try and match the related knowledge base article to uh, to give you a suggestion. Okay, or what what the potential resolution. Okay, from here, if you want to email the resolution to customer, go ahead, email the entire content. 
So there's a shortcut here, right? Email entire content, it will give me the email screen with the resolution already embedded inside. Okay, will take a while. Because there are some images. Okay, so see this information is being retrieved from the knowledge base. Okay, this particular article. Right, and then uh, it's going to give me an email screen where I can send off straight to this customer. Okay, so I'll just close that. Okay, now back to my case screen. So let me just collapse this as well. Okay, I've got the customer information over here on the right hand side. Okay, Claudia. Okay, I've got the recent cases listed as well. So I know um, she actually has got quite a number of cases with us. Right, then as usual, there's a timeline here that shows all the different interactions I have with regards to this particular case. Right, as I scroll down further, since this is being raised from the IoT device, I know actually which device raised it. Okay, and the device ID and the alert type. Okay, these are all captured automatically if you have the IoT integration. Now. Okay, now there's an enhanced SLA detail over here. If you go in here, you will give you a clock. This is a, a countdown timer that will tell you how soon you need to resolve this case. Okay, and this is actually configurable based on the different category that you tag over here. Okay, or the different incident type. Okay, maybe some uh, more urgent incident you set it to, you know, must resolve in two days, then go ahead to do that. Okay, some uh, not so severe one, maybe you set as uh, five days. You can configure all those within the system. Okay, so that whenever a customer service officer creates a ticket, okay, the system will tell you how much more time he has before um, he violates the SLA. Okay, so this is track. Right now, if um if I'm the manager, okay, if I'm manager and I go in here, I actually have got a. Uh, customer service dashboard as well okay i'm logged on as renee now renee has got a wonderful dashboard that will show how well he, her team is performing so a lot of uh, insights are being available okay based on the cases that are logged by the customer service officer okay so it will give you a summary what is the c set okay and then uh, how many cases you receive for the day Okay, uh, what's the escalation rate, average resolve time, okay, average CSAT rating. Okay, these are all available for you as a customer service uh, manager. Okay, you can even see the trend, how well your, your customer rated you. Okay, the survey sentiment as well. So all available for you. If I want to drill down to a specific case, okay, for example, I am only interested in um, let's say active case, just click on it. The rest of the area will refresh to show me the active case only. Okay, so I know 31% are active case. When I click on this area, I know these are actually all the active cases I did. Okay, I want to go drill down further to look at the cases that originate from phone call. Click on the light blue. Again, the entire uh, dashboard refreshes to show me what I want to look at. Okay, now if I want to go into view at agent level, go ahead, click on agent. Okay, this will actually show me the performance of each agent. How many cases, active, escalated, resolved, the average resolution time. Okay, all these are taken from the case that I showed earlier. Okay. The sooner they resolve the case, then the, the shorter will be the resolution time. Okay. Then the average rating is based on the survey that the customer sent back. Okay. And then I also can have a summary of, okay, by the way, this is something very interesting, right? It actually tell me uh, a summary of how, how well my team is doing. Right? Okay. Rene Law has high active cases and high resolve cases. So it give me this kind of summary okay, in text form. Okay, then I can go into view the, the all the different topics that was raised as part of the customer service team. <clears throat> so one look at it, I know what are the top problems that my clients are facing. Most of them raise coffee machine doesn't work, right? All this. So how many cases due to coffee machine doesn't work? 
22 quite a lot right mm. then how long my team took to resolve it okay uh the csat impact okay is it a, a happy resolution or i actually take quite a while therefore it affect the customer's uh, satisfaction level okay so all this information are available to me as a customer service uh, manager okay all right so uh with that, I'm done with the customer service scenario. Now I will move on to our final one, um, which is the marketing. Okay, which is the marketing. So for that, give me another minute. I will just launch the marketing app. Okay, you can go for your um, one minute break while I set up the marketing app. This app will not take a long time to load up. Okay. Okay, all right, now I'm in the marketing app. Let me just give you an introduction what this app is about, okay? So you already know sales app is for you to manage the sales people activity, okay? Uh, the leads that they are supposed to work on, right? And you also know that there's a relationship uh, uh, tracking, okay? How well you are maintaining relationship with the client and there's also an opportunity module that will track end to end. Uh, the forecast value of every opportunity that your sales people are pursuing okay so that's sales now you also know customer service right this is talking about how you handle the issue resolution okay uh, are you meeting the sla okay and you have also seen that you can uh, initiate a live chat from the knowledge base uh, portal okay and you can share video with a, a customer service officer and as a manager, I'm able to get a lot of uh, insights out of the customer service team, like how well they are all performing, what are the top key issues, right? Uh, the average resolution time each agent took, all these are available. Now, the final one I want to cover is marketing. Okay, uh, somebody actually asked why marketing is not covered first, but rather I go with sales first, okay? Um, no specific reason, okay. Um, most of my client, right, some of them don't use marketing module, okay, simply because they already have uh, engagement with other agencies that will run campaign for them. So as a result, they don't need marketing. They, they engage agencies to run, you know, like Facebook, LinkedIn campaign or maybe Google Analytics. At the end, what they get is really leads, okay. Out of all these channels, they get leads. The leads will go in straight to the sales module and therefore the process starts from there. Okay, uh, so sales, you already understood, sales will flow back to customer service. Now I'm going to show you uh, another avenue. If you want to run marketing on your own, okay, assuming your organization is big enough, you have your own campaign team, right? You have your own digital team who can design a newsletter, EDM, okay, and you have your own contact database. Then you may want to consider this tool, okay, this marketing tool. Okay, this marketing tool is licensed based on the number of contacts that you have. Okay, uh, it's a bit different from the other two apps. <clears throat> the other two apps license based on number of log-on user, but this one license based on the, the contact database. That means how big is your customer base, right? Because the more the customer base you have, the more email needs to be sent out, the more SMS needs to be sent out. Therefore, the charges will be higher. Okay, so now under the marketing, you can do a lot of things. Okay, uh, you can set up newsletter. EDM, okay, you can set up EDM. Internally, there is a editor within this software where you can you can do drag and drop, okay, to create your email newsletter. Okay, pretty much like what you do, you know, when you design a website. Okay, there are a lot of tools out there like website builder tools. So similarly to that, CRM uh, marketing allows you to create email from within this system, okay. When you create email, uh, let me just open my example. 
you can do personalization obviously okay that means uh, instead of addressing dear sir you can put in dear Alan the person name itself uh, okay so you see over here there's a curly brace with okay that means it's personalized skill uh. okay you can put in all the personalization you can drag images you can put in uh, a social media share icon you can have uh, unsubscribe preference all all of these are already available as part of the tool okay um, because this environment doesn't allow me to create data so i'm not able to show you that tool itself okay but just uh just imagine that uh, there's a toolbox here where you can define how uh, what are components you want to pull down to your edm it supports image video you can structure it into different section okay then you also can have uh, a b testing as well Okay, this is a feature that's embedded. You can do a version A where the subject is static. Okay, compare with version B where the subject actually maybe has a mention of the customer name, right? Then the system will do a 30% blast using A and 30% blast using B. Then based on the winning metrics, it will blast the rest using the winning version. Okay, that's A-B testing. All right, so um, email editor is available for you with personalization. Okay, the system also allows you to do event. Okay, so like let's say today we have a webinar, right? Okay, so similarly, if your company has got an event that they want to organize, okay, you can create an event over here. Okay, and then what happened is, after you put in all the detail about the event, when it will happen, by the way, this event is also integrated with, to the Teams live webinar, okay? You can broadcast the event live, okay? Then um, you can put in an agenda of the event, okay? Why we are putting all this information is because the system will automatically generate for you a URL that is your event landing page, okay? So it's loading now. So whatever that enter under here as part of the event, right? Uh, when it's going to happen, the agenda, right? What the attendees, room reservation, all will appear under here. See how many sessions I have, what are the speakers. Okay, all this information are configurable from the marketing app. Okay, so you don't have to build this screen. And this screen will also come with a, a button for you to straight away register. Okay, so what happened is you can actually send an email with this link to anybody who's interested in joining the event. So when they open the email, they click on the link, they can straight away sign up for the event. When they sign up, their attendance or their registration information will get registered over here. See, all these people are the ones that have signed up from this portal. Therefore, their name goes inside here. Okay, so there's an event module uh, available within the marketing right there is also something called as marketing pages okay marketing pages is like a landing page okay let's say today i send an email uh, with an introductory offer to my vip client okay i send an email to them but i want the email to have one link to bring them to a landing page where i will introduce my product okay and the landing page has a registration form if they're interested to become a member okay so i can create all my landing page here like I just show you one example. I've got a landing page to target B two B client. Mm, okay, I created it over here. How it looks like is I can click on it to show you. See, this is my landing page. Okay, so the key takeaway here again is I don't have to program this page. I don't have to host this page. Okay, I just have to create it from within this application. Okay, uh, I can upload the image if I want. Okay, I can embed a form. This kind of form. Okay, I embed it within this landing page. When I embed this kind of form, right, whatever that they enter here and click on the submit button uh, will go immediately into the marketing system. So that's how you capture lead and contact information directly. You don't have to do integration anymore. Okay, so that's how you make use of the landing pages. Now, some uh, customer actually asked whether the landing page URL can reflect the URL on my organization, right? Instead of this uh, powerassportal.com. Yes, you can. Okay, that can be done. 
there's a place where you can put in your domain, right? Then they will just whitelist this to show uh, based on the the landing, uh, based on the domain of your company, lah. Okay, so it, it looks like uh, it's within your brand, now. Okay. Now, um, by having a landing page, the system also tracks a lot of insights, like how long the customer spent spend on this page, what the URL that they click. Okay. So this kind of information uh, are available. Okay, so you know who is interested in your product and what product interests them. Okay, so that is a landing page. Now, after you have all these things, right? Uh, landing page, email. Okay, the next thing is you need to have segments. Okay, segments are like marketing lists in the old CRM term. Lah. Okay. Marketing list means the, the targeted member la, who you want to target this time around for a campaign. Okay, So the system allows you to create segment based on the criteria. Okay, The criteria will expose all the fields within the contact. Okay, uh, The name, the demographic, the case history, the opportunity history, the product holding, everything is exposed for you okay, to use as targeting criteria. Okay, I'm not able to show you that because again, this, this environment doesn't allow me to create data. Okay, but I've got a lot of segments over here already created based on various criteria. Uh, it indicate to me how many members fall under this category. Okay, whenever you create a segment, uh, uh, just remember the segment can be created based on many, many criteria. Okay, can be based on the demographic. The block means whether he opens the email, whether he signs up for an event, whether he click on a specific URL, these can be used as a targeting criteria. Okay, so for example, uh, I want to target the IP member okay, who has clicked on a specific link in the product email that I sent to them. Okay, I can do this kind of targeting. Okay, why I do that is because I'm only interested in those members who have read my email and who has indicated interest in a specific product. Okay, how he expressed interest is when he clicked on the particular link, I deem that he is interested. So I can use that as a criteria to form my segment. Okay, so now, now that I've got a segment, I've got a email EDM, I've got an event that I created, right? How I tie all these together, I've got a marketing page as well. Okay, is I create what we call as customer journey. I'll show you an example what customer journey is. Okay. Um, for some of you who are familiar with MailChimp, okay, marketing product, MailChimp, right? Or Click Dimension, okay. This kind of product have got a campaign automation tool, they call it. Okay, so it's the same over here. They just rebranded it to call as customer journey. Right? So I'll show you one example. Okay, what I do under the customer journey is I am actually creating an end-to-end -end journey for my client. Okay, end-to-end -end journey means okay from the from the target list. I will first select who is my segment. Okay, in this example, I am targeting this segment: high value, high churn risk customer, and they are in total one thousand seventy-six member in this. That's my criteria of starting this journey, okay? Now, what I want to do to this member, first of all, I will send them a marketing page invitation, okay? Remember my marketing page that I showed earlier? Let me see whether I can show you that. Hmm. Okay, this marketing page, I've already created a landing page, right? Okay, so I can actually send them a link to this landing page. Now, after they register from this landing page, I have a branch over here, you see. If they register for this particular webinar, I will start capturing them as a lead, right? And then I will send them an email with another offer. And that offer will bring them to another landing page where they sign up for a webinar. Then again, if they sign up for the webinar, I say thank you. If they don't sign up so for the webinar, I will say we miss you. Okay, now this trigger can be fired immediately based on the response or you can wait seven days later. If no response, then send them a we miss you email. Okay, 
then over here, if they never even register in the first uh, marketing form, I will send them another email. Maybe the email will, will just tell them more information. That's it. So some something like this. Uh. Okay, I can preview the email. Okay, so the, the idea here is, you see over here, I can actually create a journey. And this campaign uh, is actually um, dynamic. The next action is based on the previous action that was uh, taken by the customer. Okay, so gone were the days where, you know, we just fire and forget. Last time the, the way how campaign was run is you just blast email and hope for the best. Uh, right, you just blast and pray, they call it, right? But nowadays it's different. Okay, how is it different? First, you target who you want to target. It's not a... a, a blanket blast anymore okay you have the tool you target who you want to target okay and the tool trust me it has a lot of um, flexibility in defining who you want to target it can go down to the level of i want to target people who has uh, angry sentiment based on the customer service cases that was locked one month ago i can do that kind of other thing okay now from the member list or the segment Okay, I can then send EDM to them. The EDM will have a link for them to go to the event registration page. Okay, and this page is configured for me without programming. Okay, I can even track the action, whether they register within the event page. If they register, I know they're interested. Therefore, I do a follow-up action with them. Okay, I may create a lead record. I may even send a salesperson to them to follow up later. See my last step. So if the person responds positively to all the engagement that I send, okay, he signs up for the event, he opens my email, right? And then he, he spends quite a lot of time on the landing page. He opened my thank you email. I know this guy is actively interacting with me. Therefore, the chances of him becoming my customer is high. Therefore, I send a sales rep to follow up. See, my last step is actually sending a sales. Okay, as opposed to someone who never click on it, or never register, well, nothing much I can do, right? I can just say a thank you to them. Lah. Thank you to them with a hyperlink somewhere. Okay, now all this um, journey that I create, right? Okay, it is conditional. Okay, and then, um, at any point of time, you want to take a look at the statistic within each of these, you can take a look. The system will tell you a lot of information. Okay, like, um, okay, let me see. Uh, let's look at uh, email. Okay, let's say thank you email. Okay, okay, there's no data here to show you. Okay, let me see whether that's inside. Uh, what I want to show you is the system will actually tell you how many emails got sent out successfully, how many uh, bounce back, okay, how many is actually open by the client. Okay, so it tracks down to the level, and it will also track at the campaign level the email delivery result in general. Okay, the responses. Okay, I apologize, I don't have um, complete data in this system. Okay. Uh, because I just set it up a few days ago, lah, so I don't have all the statistics to show you. Okay, but what it's supposed to show you is the deliverability of the email. Okay, down to the level of um, the click URL within each email. Okay, I go to a specific email to show you more. Let's say, okay, webinar invite email. Lah. I hope I have some data over here. So there's always a tab called insights. Okay. Insights, uh, it will show you all these statistics. Okay. Uh, again, apologize, no, don't have much data here. So it shows you this. Uh, okay. How many unique clicks, how many clicks, how many open, then the delivery. Okay. Why all these are important uh, is because it can be used later on as your targeting criteria. Okay, if you want to target people who click on a specific URL because you are promoting one specific product, if he has clicked on that particular URL, bringing him to that product, then I want to target him. You can do that, okay? 
So this links statistic will allow you to see within this email, what is the click map? Which area the customers click most of the time? So you see the, the blue, blue shape here, uh, it shows they click on this link. Okay, again, I apologize, not much data. Okay, if, if I really have blasted this email and people start clicking on every URL, right? I will have a lot of uh, color over here. The heat map will show me which area being clicked most. Okay, obviously only on the hyperlink area, la, if it's image, it won't track. La. Okay, then it will also show me the interactions over time. Okay, again, no data. Then uh, what time they open the email? Again, no data, la, but if got data, it will show. La. What time is the best time for you to blast email? You will be able to see over here. Okay, and your A-B testing result, which is the winning template. Okay, so this marketing um, automation tool, uh, okay, allows you to create journey. Okay, and it allows you to reach out to your targeted customer based on criteria. Okay, and what are the activities that it can support? It can send email template. Okay, it can also um, send SMS. It can also send a push notification to an app. See all this? These are all the channels that support. Uh. Okay, you can send email. Okay, these are my email push notification. Okay, if um, nowadays smartphone is very common, okay, so if you want to send a push notification offer to that person's handphone right away, you can also do that. You can send SMS, obviously. Okay, all these are are, being, um, are your options whenever you interact with a customer through the Dynamics Marketing. Okay, you can use any of these channels to reach out to them. Okay, then internally, there's also a library of all the images. So, you know, as you design newsletter or EDM, right? Just like you have all the tools out there for you to design web page. Okay, they have an asset library. So same thing here. You have asset library where you can upload all your photos, all your video documents to be used in your newsletter later on. Okay, whenever you upload anything, the system automatically tags over here to ease your searching. Okay, again, it has some intelligence to try and figure out what this picture is about. Uh. Okay, but not all the time it is accurate. Uh. Sometimes it is not able to make sense out of the picture. Okay, but this is done automatically for you, the tagging. Okay, so there's an internal library here. So for those customers who have their own creative team, okay, who can who is capable of designing okay, and uh, publishing own EDM, this will be the right tool for you. Okay because you can then do everything end to end. Okay, another thing I want to highlight here is the three apps that I, I demo today, sales, service, and marketing, they are all sharing the same set of data. Okay, what that implies is whenever you have a um, sales activity that you capture lead into the sales app, for example, right? The same customer base is available for you to do targeting in the marketing. Okay, it shares the same database. So that makes um, uh, integration not necessary anymore because behind the scene, it is the same database. Okay, so in Dynamics 365, all these apps share the same database. Database is the, the term they use uh, to indicate the database behind it. Okay, so you don't have to do integration anymore. Okay, I have customers who, you know, they, they are not too familiar with the app or maybe they subscribe way earlier before the app comes out. Okay, they have a CRM that handles sales. Then they have another MailChimp system that does the marketing. Then they have another, maybe another system that uh, does the customer service. Then they will have a problem, right? Because the data from sales cannot flow into marketing for targeting. Then they end up buying a connector, like, you know, to, to do integration. So they end up spending a lot of money just to do integration so that these three apps can work together. Okay, but Dynamics 365 already um, solved the issue for us. These three apps, as you subscribe them, even though separately, behind the scene is the same data verse. Okay. Oh, okay.
Okay, let me see what else I need to cover. So that's marketing. Okay, the marketing module also has what we call as a lead scoring model. Okay, sometimes your you want to assign score to your lead. Okay, because you need to know where your priority is, right? So you can do things like um, okay, based on the leads interaction against the activity that I run, I give them point. I can do that. So for example, if my lead uh, evaluate my email, I will give them five points. So based on the email open, okay, remember Dynamics 365 will track the email interaction. So I want the system to run five points to the customer if he opens the email. Okay, I set one rule here. Now, if he signed up for an event, even better. I know he is actively engaging with me. I give him 10 points. See how I set all these conditions? Okay, if there's a website visits, remember our landing page where you know I can create and advertise all my product over there. So if they visit my website, again, I give them five points. So with all this interaction, the lead will, will start accumulating points. And then based on a point, I will then give them a grade. See over here. I can say that if any lead um, has a 50 point and above, I will deem that sales ready. He is ready to engage with me. Then I will start sending a salesperson to start calling him to follow up with the sales. Okay. Otherwise, if he's between this score, I will just tag him as good lead. Anything lower and rich lead, anything lower than that, poor. Don't even bother to contact him because he is not actively engaging with me. Therefore, it is unlikely that he will buy anything from you. Okay. So this is another um, module that is available for you to run lead score okay so remember you can still engage your agency to run your online digital campaign okay in facebook in google in linkedin right whenever you engage all these agency usually they will have a form to capture the lead okay you can pass them the the landing page form that you create over here okay let them promote that landing page the registration form in all the channel that they are good at okay you, end of the day, what you want is the lead go into a CRM system. And when it goes into the CRM system, score will be even. And once score is even, remember, it ties back to the sales module where your sales people can prioritize based on the score and start engaging the customer. And therefore, the sales cycle will start then. Okay, so that is, um, that's an overview lah, of what the marketing module is about. Okay. All right, I think um, we have another 10 minutes. Okay, um, I am already done with the three modules that I wanted to share with you guys today. Okay, so it's an end-to-end -end journey. Um, I'll just open the floor for any question. Okay, um, again, I thank you for your time today. Okay, thanks for participating in this webinar where we learn and share together the three app functionality offered by Dynamics 365 customer engagement. Okay, so um, is there any question? Uh, by the way, um, yeah, so Gemrin Consulting uh, has, has got a um, new course available for Dynamics 365 sales functionality. Okay, this particular course is um, meant for functional as well as technical people. Okay, we, we combine these two expertise and created a course of four days. Okay, this course um, will teach you how to configure the sales module as well as how to leverage on the functionality that I showed earlier. Okay, so if you're interested to sign up for the course, Feel free to um, browse the the course agenda at the uh, Gemrain Consulting's website. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll share the the URL link in the chat later on. Yeah, thanks, Wing Soon. Yeah, okay, guys, if you are interested in the full training, right, you may check out 
the Microsoft Dynamics 365 Sales Techno Functional Workshop. The links is uh, the link already pasted in in the Q and A box there. You guys may may direct to 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 the link. So it is actually a four days training, and then the date is on 17th to 20th of May from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. And actually, this course right is actually crafted by Wing Wing Soon himself. So the cost fee for this training is actually at three thousand per pack, and now we are doing a Raya promo, which is only at two thousand six per pack. So if you have any questions, you can actually get in touch with us via email or even our website live chat if you're interested. So um, Wing Soon, anything to add on from your side? Mm, not at the moment. I just want to thank everyone who participated. Okay, um, I hope I have shared enough for today. It's good enough to give you an overview of what are the capabilities of the three products. Okay, so uh, feel free to get in touch even after this webinar. We'll, we'll be more than happy to collaborate and see if there's any opportunity we can work together. All right, thanks, Wing Soon. And also, I uh, would like to announce that upcoming on 1st of April, we will be having uh, another webinar, which is actually Flutter. So you may feel free to register as well. And also, upcoming, there will be a series of another free training, a sponsored training. Okay, which is uh, under paid forward series, uh, but it's actually more to soft skills. So uh, when it launches, you guys can actually check out from our website as well. All right. Thanks a lot. See you guys again. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.